So I'm a total newbie when it comes to installing car stereos, but I wanted to swap out my current deck with something that had a screen to help with navigation. I also wanted to see if I could just do it myself. So this video will document three things, ordering, unboxing, and installation of my new deck. So let's get started. After doing some research, I decided to get my new deck from Crutchfield, basically because they had a good reputation for customer support. So before I even went to the Crutchfield site, I knew my budget would be somewhere in the $300 range. The reason for this, I was upgrading an older car, a 2010 RAV4 base model. Since this would be my first time doing this, if I couldn't get it to work, I didn't want to be out too much money. I'd mainly be using the new deck with an Android or iOS phone for navigation, uh, listening to podcasts, and some music. So I just wanted something to plug into my car's stock speakers. So one thing I liked about the Crutchfield site right away was the ability to pop in my car's info and then see results that I knew would work with my car. From there, I was able to filter by my price point. So for my needs, this Boss unit fit the bill. It worked with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The price was right, and it even came with a backup camera, which is something I need, but not something I'll be installing in this video. Maybe in a future one, though. So since I have a base model RAV4 with no steering wheel controls, I picked the free kit here. And for my level of expertise, getting the ready harness was a no-brainer for me. So everything looked good. I really liked the level of detail in the invoice, that they'd include custom instructions for my car. And so I ordered it. I ordered on a Monday and received it the following Thursday. So let's start unboxing and see what we got. So the box looked good. First things first, I just wanted to remove all of the items from the box, make sure the box was completely empty, and then give each item a closer look. So now we can see what we've got. A support manual with info on tech support. The ready harness, which hopefully will make installation a lot easier. It has labeled wires. Posi taps for connecting to the parking brake and the reverse light for the backup camera. The dash kit. Mounting hardware. Instructions. The boss deck itself. User's manual. Mounting hardware, microphone, backup camera, the deck itself, so now that we've got everything, let's see if we can get this thing installed. Now first things first, I wanted to point out how good I thought Crutchfield's communication was. They sent me an email confirming what I ordered. They sent me a link to installation instructions specific to my car and also included links to other miscellaneous manuals, which I found pretty helpful. So once I was ready, I gathered some tools along with a USB extension cable I got from Amazon. And I'll talk a little bit more about the cable later on in this video. Out of the tools, what I used mostly were the panel tools, the ratchet wrench with extension and 10 millimeter socket and a Phillips screwdriver. So first things first, I had to remove the old radio. So I disconnected the negative battery terminal, whipped out a panel tool, and set about removing the two side panels. From there, I removed the four 10 millimeter bolts, which held the radio in place. I then slid out the old radio, took a picture of the back of it with the old wiring intact, then disconnected and removed it. 
So here's the old radio harness along with the antenna cable. So I took the old radio and dash assembly back to the garage, compared it to the new stuff, then set up the new radio, adding the clips and brackets, trying my best to approximate the look of the old radio setup. It was now time to get back to the car with the new radio, the new harness, and the extra USB extension I'd picked up. Now though the radio itself already had USB cables, I thought it would look neater to connect them to the extension and then feed the extension down to where I'd previously installed a USB charger. So here's the disconnected old radio harness and the connected new ready harness from Crutchfield. All I had to do was plug it into the car wiring and that was it. Following that, I plugged the harness, antenna and microphone into the new radio and I just ended up grounding the parking brake wire to the car chassis. More details on this stuff at the end of this video. So once all the wiring was plugged in, I reconnected the car battery and started up the car to see if the radio worked. And once I confirmed it would power up, I connected my phone to the radio's USB and tested that. I then set about putting everything back together. A few moments later. Okay, so this is a couple of weeks later after installing and using the deck with some final notes and observations. So when installing the deck, in addition to connecting the harness, don't forget to plug in any other miscellaneous cables you'll be using. Examples of these are the antenna, microphone, USB extension, backup camera, etc. You don't want to discover you've forgotten something after bolting the deck in and adding the car trim back. Now for the microphone, I was able to stick it on my steering column and then fish it underneath where I found an opening to the area behind the deck. For the USB extension, I was able to fish the cable down from behind the deck over to this spot right here. From here, I plug in my phone and just drop it into the cup holder. Now, since I wasn't connecting a backup camera, I thought I'd just try connecting the deck's parking brake wire to the car's chassis. So after doing that, I did a quick test and it worked. And then I just screwed it down behind the trim and it has worked out fine for me so far. So now let's start up the car and check out how the deck boots up. just to give you a sense of how long it takes to boot up. So you see, it isn't instantaneous, but it's fast enough. I mainly use the deck for three things, navigation, podcasts, and music. I just have it connected to my car's stock speakers, and for my needs, it's worked out fine. As long as this thing stays reliable, I'll be very satisfied with this purchase, but I guess only time will tell in that respect. So if you want more details on adding a USB extension or just want to see some other car-oriented videos, keep watching and thanks.